Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Lee, and I'm a mining analyst here at Red Cloud Securities. We welcome Chris Wright, Chairman and CEO, Doug Cavey, VP Corporate Development, and Sherry Roberge, the CFO of Defiant Silver. Uh, they'll speak to us about the company's silver exploration projects in the historic Zacatecas camp, as well as the Tapal Gold Copper Project in Mexico. Uh, folks, you have 10 minutes, and then we'll have a five-minute Q&A session at the end. Attendees, please feel free to ask questions using the Q&A link below. Take it away, Doug. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you, Red Cloud, for putting on another great Oktoberfest presentation and set of meetings. Um, as Tim said, here, uh, happy to present about Defiant Silver and a bit of a forward-looking statement. I hope uh, to continue to make forward-looking statements with our company. Uh, but just please pay attention to this disclaimer, and that's at the front of our presentation. Defiant Silver is a Mexico-focused exploration and development company. We have two standalone assets, our San Acasio, or Zacatecas District Project, located in Zacatecas, Mexico, the heart of one of the most prolific silver mining districts in the world. And our Tapal Project, which is a totally different project, a porphyry epithermal system, but has a pre-feasibility PEA level 1.8 million ounce measured and indicated gold resource and 813 million pounds of copper. Defiant Silver has exposure to a robust resource base. We have significant exploration potential, both of our assets. We are building a drill program out at our San Acasio main resource build out. We have exploration potential in Zacatecas. We have a large measured indicator resource at Tapal. We have exploration potential at Tapal. And we have a team of people that have experience advancing these assets. Um, we have over 100 years of cumulative experience working in Mexico from exploration through to MA and mine development and eventual mining. When combined with our senior leadership, that's over 200 years of cumulative global mining experience. Our project, as much of a cliche as it is, are leveraged to precious metal prices. We have a strong sensitivity to the underlying uh, commodities at Tapal and strong resource uh, upside with our Zacatecas assets. Our company is 40% held by management, uh, key shareholders, institutions, and in the last 12 months, we've brought in about 12 new uh, institutional shareholders, and I think we're philosophically aligned with everybody. Um, and we have drill ready exploration targets. We've been drilling for the last 12 months at San Acasio. Uh, we have over 68 targets, 68 pads permitted for our Zacatecas regional drilling programs. And we're doing it right now. We have an upcoming drill program that is about to start to test some high priority exploration targets in the Zacatecas district. The company is a uh, strong financial position, probably the best financial position the company's ever been in. We have over $19 million cash in the bank, um, trading about $125 million market cap, 220 million shares outstanding and fully diluted including warrants and options is 257 million shares. Uh, as I mentioned, about 35, 40% institutionally held and uh, trading pretty actively, pretty good volume on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Our Zacatecas district projects are located in the heart of one of the most prolific silver mining districts in the world. Uh, we're about 35 kilometers away from the Fresnillo mine, which is the world's largest primary silver mine. And that's right next door to Mag Silver's Juan Asipio, uh, mining project, a joint venture with Fresnillo, which will eclipse Fresnillo, eclipse Fresnillo as the largest primary silver mine in the world. We have an option to acquire the entire district if we don't already own it. And only one license in our entire portfolio isn't uh, available to purchase an NSR. We have a small starter resource, and we've been consistently uh, adding to the uh, known mineral volume of that main resource area. But what we really like to think of is this is Fresnillo from the 1960s, both as an exploration methodology, but a proof of concept that when you step into these districts and you look for the productive structures and test them, that they yield favorable results. We have very similar crustal position as Fresnillo. And it's important to remember that Fresnillo, which is currently the world's largest primary sil silver producer, was out of ore in the 1960s. They conducted 10 years of mineral systems geoscience and discovered the Santo Nino vein, which was three meters of 1,000 grams silver, 1.6 grams gold, and about a percent combined like zinc. We've consistently encountered these same similar grades in structures deeper than the current resource estimate. And we think that's building out a, uh, a volumetric uh, expansion of the, of the current resource estimate at San Acasio. Our last three results that we put out uh, earlier this year has continuously demonstrated that the result is, or that the structure is still productive at depth. Uh, we're continu continuously encountering over a kilogram per ton silver material, about 150 meters below the current resource estimate. 
When you look at the long section through the deposit, you can see that we are well below the current resource estimate, but in an area where we can leverage the, the considerable historical infrastructure and in-place infrastructure in Zacatecas. Zacatecas is a mining camp with over 450 years of mining history, and we've been leveraging that infrastructure with a cost-effective drill program um, in, in our main Beta Grande resource area. In this photo, you can see we're drilling underneath a power line next to an open pit with a paved road drive coming to the mining property itself. In 2020, we acquired Pan, an option to acquire Pan American Zacatecas District Land Holdings. It tripled our land position in the district, and it added uh, about 20 kilometers of vein strike length of untested drill targets. We have a permit to drill that pro uh, property. We'll continue to uh, work up additional targets, and we expect that we'll start drilling there in the next week. In the north is the Panuco block, which is currently being drilled by Zacatecas Silver. They're drilling on strike of a Panuco block. But what we're really excited about is the Palenque structure. It's a series of structures, a series of veins, about four kilometers in strike, uh, over 12 meter wide in places with grades up to 700 grams per ton silver. Um, we'll start there, we'll start move into Tawares, we'll test the El Puerto structure, test the Palenque structure. And we see this as true resource expansion potentials, true uh, exploration resource expansion potential in the area. Very rare that you can step into a district that's well mineralized. Uh, this well understood and acquire a substantial land position of undrilled high grade vein structures, but a kilometer away from the historic tailings facility of the Veda Grande vein system. So, or sorry, the Veda Grande mine. So, we see this as a uh, true um, mineral systems expansion potential in that, tent that supports our theory that there is a, a lot more uh, discovery potential. In the so, how are we going to do this? Uh, we know discovery focused mineral systems geoscience works. Uh, three kilometers away from us, Capstone Mining is uh, in development uh, in mining at their Cozumel mine. They're over a thousand meters of vertical profile of mineralization of the property. We're fully financed to do our two phase exploration, two pronged exploration program, uh, building out on our cornerstone resource estimate, but then also our uh, exploration drilling program at Tawades, Palenque, and El Puerto. So in the next 12 months, we'll continue to drill out our regional exploration, but ongoing drilling in our main resource area adding ounces to an advanced asset. In 2018, we acquired a, a project called uh, Paul. Paul's an advanced gold copper project, uh, has a PFS, a PEA, and a current PEA that was done in 2017 with an MNI resource of 1.8 million ounces of gold and 813 million pounds of copper. Uh, over $27 million has been spent on this asset to date. It's got great infrastructure. Uh, nearby port facilities include one of the largest concentrate shipping facilities in western uh, in Western Mexico. Um, you can drive to the projects about four and a half hours from Guadalajara. Uh, surface rights are held by private landowners as opposed to Ajito ownership, as you see elsewhere in Mexico. And through a series of exploration campaigns and uh, a lot of regional work and a lot of desktop remodeling, uh, there's a significant exploration target, which is an untested high grade gold feeder system and the roots or the core of a, core of a porphyry system that remains open at depth. The 2017 PEA that was done at Tapal demonstrates some robust economics at 1250 gold and 250 copper at a 2.3 year payback of a $214 million initial capex, uh, gives a 24% post tax IRR and a post tax MPV of $169 million. $1,500 gold and $3 copper, that post-tax MPV doubles to $345 million US. Um, in early 2021, we entered into an option to repurchase the 2.5% NSR, and that has substantial value to the post-tax MPV of this asset as well. The thesis of the company is that this can be a 100,000 ounce a year, 10-year producer. And that's not by pushing ounces, as you can see from the front of the life of my production forecast, into the back end of the mining, but by organically adding ounces to the back end of the production schedule. That being said, it's a pretty tidy operation from the 2017 PEA. Uh, initial capex, 214 million uh, US dollars, uh, all in sustaining costs, $396 per ounce. And that delivers an averaging 79,000 ounces a year and 32 million pounds of copper. So where are we gonna pull a rabbit out of the hat with that back end mine forecast? Well, as I mentioned, over the past 12 months, we've been doing a substantial amount of desktop work, which includes a lot of remodeling, understanding what the structures are, why, is the, uh, why are the mineral systems in place where they are, and we've broken it down into two blocks. The west block, which is a porphyry dominant block, and the center block, which is porphyry epithermal block. That's important because the center block hosts a number of high-grade gold targets. The west block hosts what we think are uh, near-term resource building uh, targets within or are surrounding our conceptual pit boundaries from the 2017 PEA. 
the, as I mentioned, the West Block, which is that more porphyry style mineralization. Um, as remodeled, we understand where the structural controls are, where are the faults that uh, truncate the deposit. And as you can see from the approximate base of the current pit shell design, the deepest hole into this part of the system, which is into the highest value NSR rock per ton on the property, cuts 188 meters of 1.04 grams per ton copper and 0.38% uh, sorry, 1.04 uh, grams per ton gold and 0.38% copper. Uh, and that does uh, have substantial volume to the actual vertical profile of the mineral system. And just given the forecasted mining production would fall into that uh, year six through 10 of mine mode. So we do see that mineral resource build out potential that we believe we can test. Um, our goal with this target, as it is hotter alteration and hotter temperature mineralization, we believe this is getting closer to a core, uh, the core of a porphyry system, uh, is to test this at depth and, and see what the vertical extent of this mineralization is. The other block that we have is the center block is more porphyry style or ep porphyry epithermal block. Um, it could be a bit shallower style mineralization. Um, when these shallower, these epithermal um, structures have been cut, um, they come back at very high grade gold, 25 grams gold, 565 grams silver. It's in a corridor of mineralization that comes up with up to five grams gold and 150 grams silver at surface. And that's supported by coincidental geophysics, strong structural geology, alteration at surface. And all of this has led, including the west block and center block, to five high priority exploration zones with 12 holes planned alongside of regional exploration work. Uh, this is all alongside an initiative where we are driving, uh, accessing long-term surface rights agreement for mine construction, so that at the end of these campaigns over the next 12 to 24 months, this will look like a different asset, will look like a project that is much more shovel ready than it currently is. So we do have a robust resource base as demonstrated with a lot of exploration potential, both at Santa Casio in the Zacatecas district and at our Tapal asset. We have a team of people that have had decades of success doing that both here in Mexico and globally. And we have a strong leverage to precious metal prices, as you can see at the Tapal site, the price sensitivity, Every $200, $250 of gold price increases as $100 million to the post-tax MPV of the project. Um, we have strong resource upside, both in the main Beta Grande resource area, but with a number of vein targets that are within a, a billion ounce historic silver camp. Uh, over 40% of, uh, of the stock is held by key shareholders and management. Uh, we're very philosophically aligned with them. We've had an open dialogue. And we continue to, uh, to, to work with our shareholders to deliver the, the results that we've had to date. And we're doing it now uh, this company's drilling we have drill permits in place on our project we have multi-year drill permits in place on our santa Casio asset and we'll be drilling actively here for the next 12 months so catalysts to look forward to are both resource drill out targets that are santa Casio, our main beta grande vein system and then the regional exploration results in our lucita land package thank you very much for your time today look forward to hearing some questions you feel free to reach out we uh, try and be as active as we can with our shareholders follow us on twitter on linkedin with a number of uh, initiatives right now to keep uh, everybody as informed as possible. And I encourage you to check out the website or reach out to us directly. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Doug, for the informative presentation. Uh, we'll now move into the Q&A session here. And um, I think we do have a, a quick question, but with the uh, uh, with Lucida and, and the vein system that you've identified there, what work has been, do been done on that system in the past? So in the north of the Lucita license is called Panuco. Uh, Panuco is a well-known uh, district in Mexico. It hosts on uh, the project adjacent to us, hosts a 19 million ounce estimate that was recently undergone in a number of metallurgical tests and is, is being drilled as we speak uh, up to our property boundary. Uh, that was drilled in the north. Uh, Pan American Silver had a number of successful drill campaigns, returned high grade silver, and we have all of that core. So we'll continue to watch what's going on in that northern uh, central block, which is the Palenque and El Puerto, and, and some of our veins, the Tawares veins, would look to dip into that part of the block. I've seen a very traditional uh, long term Mexico or mining history. So there's old shafts, there's old trenches, historical workings. And then peripheral to the actual land position, there has been some drill holes that have come up with some very high grade silver results. So it, uh, since we've acqu uh, acquired the asset, we've done an extensive mapping campaign over the asset, uh, sample, resampled a lot of the veins, and then target ranked so that when we go and drill it, we'll drill our best targets first. Um, it is a very well-known camp, so there are a number of people who do know about this asset. 
we followed the very uh, well-defined linear exploration profile that we've successfully done in other projects elsewhere in Mexico and globally. And, and that has allowed us to rank the target. Great. All right, well, thank you again, Doug, Sherry, and Chris for the presentation today. And thank you everyone out there for, for joining us.